Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Anne Boleyn was the second wife of Henry VIII, who met a terrible end inside the Tower of London, losing her head after her husband and his adviser Thomas Cromwell had plotted her downfall. But before the Tower became the place of her execution and her burial site, it was a place of great happiness for Anne Boleyn, as it was where she would wait for her coronation as Queen. This was traditional, as during the medieval period, many kings and queens stayed in the Tower before they were crowned monarchs. But Anne was a woman, who many believed was a home wrecker, and a woman who stole the king away from his rightful queen and his wife. She was not a popular woman, and it was rumoured that a rebellion even tried to take her hostage and captive. But what is the story of the coronation of Anne Boleyn? At the time, coronations of kings and queens were huge celebrations that lasted a number of days. On the first day, Anne would be taken by river to the Tower of London, where she was to stay for two nights. On the third day, a procession by road would take place from the Tower to Westminster. And on the final day, the coronation and great banquet would take place at Westminster Hall. On the first day... Elaborately decorated great royal barges carrying the London livery, escorted by a number of smaller vessels, left Billingsgate en route for Greenwich. They rowed against the tide, and it took two hours to reach Greenwich. It was said that flags and bunting over all hung with gold foil that glistened in the sun and with little bells that twinkled. And the vessels were packed with musicians of every kind, and more cannon than seemed safe on such a crowded waterway. The fleet was led by a light wherry, in which had been constructed a mechanical dragon that could be made to move and belch out flames, and with it were other models of monsters and huge wide men, who threw blazing fireworks and uttered hideous cries. The river procession was a work of art, aimed to shock the Londoners, and we are not sure how many people came to greet Anne Boleyn. Some may have watched the procession pick her up out of loyalty to their king, Henry VIII, but many would have turned their backs in protest. Regardless of this, thousands of people lined the banks of the River Thames to see the procession. Anne boarded her own decorated barge with her ladies-in-waiting and the principal ladies of her court. The rest of her women were taken in a second barge, and the king followed behind with his own guard, and they were dressed in their finest and best clothes. It was estimated that there were 120 larger boats and 200 smaller ones in the procession. And when they got close to the tower, there was a wave of cannon fire shot from Tower Wharf. Anne Boleyn was met by a group of officials and heralds who led her to the king himself. The royal couple then spent the next two days in the private apartments that Cromwell had made sure were ready for them, and they enjoyed ancient court rituals linked to their upcoming wedding. The apartments they stayed in cannot be seen today, and they were close to the White Tower and main curtain wall. During the two days at the Tower, 18 knights of the Bath were created, and many of these were linked to the Berlins through family. One of them was Francis Weston, who would later be taken back to the Tower as a prisoner. At five o'clock on the 31st of May 1533, the procession left the Tower of London en route to Westminster. Around 300 people of varying importance made up the procession, and it slowly travelled through the crowds. There were six stops along the route, and there were many locations which had been decorated for Anne. Anne travelled in a carriage that was covered in white satin, and white cloth of gold. Her hair was worn loose to her waist, and she was dressed in filmy white with a coronet of gold, and it was said that over her was a canopy of cloth of gold held up by the barons of the clink ports. Then came her own palfrey, and also trapped in white. Twelve ladies in crimson velvet rode behind, then two carriages, one white, one red, and thirty gentlewomen on horseback, this time in black velvet. These were followed by the king's guard in two files, one on each side of the street, and the last all the servants in the livery of their masters or mistresses. On the 1st of June 1553, Anne Boleyn would enter Westminster Hall ready to be crowned Queen of England. 
She was dressed in coronation robes of purple velvet, furred with ermine with the gold coronet on her head, which had been worn the day before. The procession then walked to the high altar of Westminster Abbey, where Anne was crowned on St Edward's chair. She was now an anointed queen. But other accounts of the proceedings do exist. A Tudor chronicle, Edward Hall, told of the events of the day. He wrote, On Thursday, the 29th of May, Lady Anne, Marquess of Pembroke, was received as Queen of England by all the Lords of England. And the Mayor and Aldermen, with all the guilds of the City of London, went to Greenwich in their barges after the best fashion, with also a barge of bachelors of the Mayor's Guild richly hung with gold of cloth with a great number to wait on her. And so all the lords with the mayor and all the guilds of London brought her by water from Greenwich to the Tower of London, and there the king's grace received her as she landed, and then a thousand guns were fired at the tower, and others were fired at Limehouse, and on other ships lying in the Thames. And on Saturday, the last day of May, she rode from the Tower of London, through the city with a goodly companion of lords, knights and gentlemen, with all the peers of the realm richly apparelled. She herself rode in a rich chariot covered with cloth of silver, and a rich canopy of cloth of silver, borne over her head by the four lords of the ports, in gowns of scarlet, followed by four richly hung chariots of ladies, and other several other ladies and gentlewomen, riding on horseback, all in gowns made of crimson velvet. And there were various pageants made on scaffold in the city, and all the guilds were standing in their liveries, each one in order, the mayor and alderman standing in Cheapside. And when she came before them in Recora of London, made a goodly presentation to her, and then the mayor gave her a purse of cloth of fold with a thousand marks of angel nobles in it, as a present from the whole of the city, and so the lords brought her to the palace of Westminster and left her there that night. On the 1st of June, Queen Anne was brought from Westminster Hall to St Peter's Abbey in procession, with all the monks of Westminster going in rich copes of gold, with thirteen murted abbots, and after them all the king's chapel, in rich copes with four bishops and two mitred archbishops, and all the lords going in their parliament robes, and the crown borne before her by the Duke of Suffolk, and two sceptres by two earls, and she herself going under a rich canopy of cloth of gold, dressed in a kirtle of crimson, velvet decorated with ermine, and a robe of purple velvet decorated with ermine over that, and a rich coronet with a cap of pearls and stones on her head, and the old Duchess of Norfolk, carrying her train in a robe of scarlet, with a coronet of gold on her cap, and Lord Burr, the Queen's Chamberlain, supporting the train in the middle. After her followed ten ladies in robes of scarlet, trimmed with ermine, and round coronets of gold on their heads, and next after them all the Queen's maids in gowns of scarlet, edged with white Baltic fur, and so she was brought to St Peter's Church at Westminster, and there set in the high royal seat, which was made on a high platform before the altar. And there she was anointed and crowned Queen of England by the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York, and so sat crowned in her royal seat all through the Mass. She offered at the said Mass, and when the Mass was done they left, every man in his order, to Westminster Hall, she still going under the canopy, crowned, with two sceptres in her hands, my Lord Wiltshire, her father, and Lord Talbot leading her and so dined there, and there was made the most honourable feast that had ever been seen. The great hall at Westminster was richly hung with rich cloth of arras, and a table was set at the upper end of the hall, going up twelve steps where the queen dined, and a rich cloth of estate hung over her head. There was also four other tables along the hall, and it was railed on every side, from the high dais in Westminster Hall to the platform in the church in the abbey. And when she went to the church to her coronation, there was a striped blue cloth spread from the high dais of the king's bench to the high altar of Westminster on which she went. And when the queen's grace had washed her hands, then came the Duke of Suffolk, constable for the day and steward of the feast, 
riding on horseback, richly dressed and decorated, and with him also riding on horseback, Lord William Howard, as deputy for the Duke of Norfolk, in his office of Marshal of England. And then came the Queen's service, followed by the archbishops with a certain space between, which was all borne by knights, the archbishop sitting at the Queen's board and at the end of her left hand. The Earl of Sussex was Sewer, Earl of Essex Carver, Earl of Derby, Cupbearer, Earl of Arundel Butler, Vice-Count Lysel Panter, and the Lord Grey Almoner. Anne Boleyn was a queen who divided England, and her refusal to take the king's bed even split religion across the nation. She would years later return to the Tower of London as a prisoner of her husband, Henry VIII, and it would be a place where today she is laid to rest, her head having been separated from her body. Anne is considered a victim of her husband, Henry VIII, but her coronation was one which was not considered the most popular. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.